Tell your ma, tell your pa, gonna send you back to Arkansas. It's the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. This Medicare podcast has no excuse, sir. Knock, knock. Who's there? Medicare expert Doug Jones. Hello, Mr. Fisher. <laughs> Just kidding. That's for my friend who is listening to this episode. Every time I see him, he says, oh, I listened to episodes number so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. So-and-so was better, but this one was good and everything else. So just wanted to say hi to my friend, Mr. Fisher. I am Doug Jones. I am your Medicare expert. And for everybody but Mr. Fisher, who is already a valued client, I am here to make you feel confident that uh, Medicare and you are going to be a good match together. Uh, it, it can be a wonderful thing for those who find that health insurance is very expensive and maybe hard to get in your later years. And so when it's age 65 or, say, retirement uh, from your job happened to you, the thing you want to do is uh, embrace Medicare. And the way you embrace Medicare is step one in that embracement is to purchase Medicare for the Lazy Man 2024. I would suggest going to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com to purchase your copy. You have your choice of uh, various editions at Amazon.com. You can get the Audible book that you can listen to. You can get the Kindle version, the ebook that you can have downloaded instantly to your reader. You can get the paperback book that most people seem to choose. And if you're a real high roller, you can get the hardcover version, which is uh, a $24 item, but well worth it. It'll send a signal to your friends and relatives that you are just a cut above the average consumer. So when you get the book, when you read the book, you're going to be as much of a Medicare expert as it's possible for a civilian in this country to be. But more importantly, my contact email address, my information is going to be in the book. And you, when your uh, Medicare encounter is just a couple of months away, contact me. Use that information to get a hold of me and say, hey, I've read the book. It's time to think about Medicare. Tell me what my Medicare supplement's going to cost me. Tell me about my Medicare drug plan. Hey, I might want some dental, vision, and hearing insurance. Tell me what that would cost me. And uh, with a short questionnaire of information, of factual information about you, I will be able to tell you what all those things are going to cost you. And then you can decide which is best for you. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fisher have already decided they are, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say they're my clients, uh, valued clients indeed, and they're sources of influence amongst their friends and uh, their uh, former business associates. So it's uh, pretty cool to know that friends are in the audience. Anyway, another friend I've got to uh, deal with here who would normally be in the audience, but he's actually a participant in this Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast is Randy Carson, and he's sitting right on the other side of the screen. Hello, Randy. How are you? Hey, today? Doug. How are you today? You're looking bright eyed and bushy tailed. Well, I don't know about my tail, but I am bright eyed and good. Uh, good. <laughs> I'm able to focus, and I'm I'm not only focused today, but I'm goal oriented. I'm task oriented. There well, that's good because uh, I've got some questions for you. Oh boy. Okay. You're, we, you're uh, dissuading me from my task and my goal, but go ahead. <laughs> I thought just for kicks and giggles, we'd play just a little short game of stump the insurance expert. Already lay it on me. I'm ready to be stumped, uh, which is and this, a lot this more be, painful than it sounds. This is really going to be a, a different little type of quiz. So I, obviously it's this day in history, June 11th. Okay. All right. And I'm going to give I'm going to give you the choice of the year. OK, right. so what what happened on June 11th? And I'm going to list off some years. All right. 2001. Mm hmm. 2002. Mm hmm. 1982. OK. And one more 1950. All right. What I'm going to say on every one of those years, but the last one is that we had a birthday party 
for our son, Brian, who was born on June 11th, 1978. And uh, he is now the proprietor of Wrigleyville South in Austin, Texas, where he dishes up fine food for the patrons of the Saxon Pub every time uh, they have a, a concert. Uh, he's uh, busy as a one-armed paper hanger or a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest, whichever you prefer. So I want to say happy birthday to Brian Jones. That was my guess. But then you threw in 1950, and that's a complete foul ball or a curve ball. So okay. I'm going to have to say I don't know. Well, let me tell you. Let me. Okay, are you going to pick a date though? Oh, I have to pick one of those years. Yeah, pick a pick a date, pick a year, okay. and then I'll let's start. Let's start with 1950. Okay, well, 1950. So 1950 was a great year if you're a golfer. Oh, really? Okay. Capping a dramatic recovery from a near fatal automobile accident. American golfer Ben Hogan won the U.S. Open. No kidding. After the automobile accident, well, I have a book by Ben Hogan uh, in a box somewhere in this house. And uh, <laughs> when I find it, maybe I'll uh, give it a new, uh, more honored place on the bookshelves. Yeah, but exactly. I will have, I've got to tell you that around this time in the summer of 1948, was the uh, Saturday evening post cover with my grandfather on the cover playing golf somewhere in Scottsdale or Phoenix. I don't know which, uh, which call course it was, but he was on the cover watching the chairman of the board of um, uh, the Borg Warner corporation hack a giant hole in a sand trap because he couldn't get out of the <laughs> trap to save his soul. And all the other guys are standing around waiting stroke after stroke after stroke. So how many, so ultimately, do you have to stand there until hell freezes over? Or well, the artist there, probably okay. took a photograph and, and worked from the photograph, but you could tell oh, this okay. guy was, this guy's hair was flying and he was uh, obviously not in a good mood, uh, hacking there, away at that sand trap. There. You, well, this, here's one more. And obviously it becomes, now this is going to put a smile on Doug's face, but it becomes a little more difficult when he wasn't born yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would like you to know what happened on this date in 1509. Oh boy. Joan of Arc burned at the stake. Uh, no, it wasn't, but it was no. a, that's a great, that's a great guess. Well, Henry, I don't know. Henry the eighth, Henry the eighth wed uh, his yes. first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Ah, uh, yes. And the refusal of Pope Clement the seventh to later uh -huh. annul the marriage, triggered the break between Henry and Rome. And that's what led to the English Reformation. Well, that's how we all got to be uh, Protestants instead yes. of the uh, Catholics yeah. that they had been before. Yeah. That's, uh, that's very interesting. I, I am not an aficionado of the Henry VIII line of the English uh, throne because I'm related or descended from the other side, which came, the split came with Richard the Lionhearted and his yeah. brother, his evil brother, John, if you know the the uh, uh, Robin Hood legends. Yeah. Yeah. King John ruled in Richard's absence while Richard was off fighting in the Crusades and then getting kidnapped in Germany and being held for ransom. And uh, John uh, uh, was not apparently the best choice of substitute <laughs> kings well he is my ancestor and my lineage comes down through him so henry the eighth is a totally kind of an unrelated uh, branch of the english uh, royal family well in terms of henry the eighth if you were looking at his wives henry could have used a minibus is that because they were all kind of tubby no that he had many of them and oh, most of them <laughs> most of them got beheaded or divorced yeah. or well, lost was... in them Lost in yeah. the mix or something. No fault divorce hadn't been invented yet. So no, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> once they signed on the dotted line and couldn't produce an heir, their days were numbered. They were in tough shape then, I'm telling Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And he still never had a male heir. If he had known going in, he probably wouldn't have beheaded all the wives. He probably would have just said, okay, I'll settle for Elizabeth, my daughter, to be the, uh, yeah. uh, the heir that I'm hoping for. Yeah. Well, you know something? We got to get to going and, and make some yeah. money here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and encourage us to move forward with some money making stuff. Yes, let's do that. I want you to stay connected, though. I don't don't mute yourself out and run away like you normally do, because um, I've got a couple of uh, interactive activities that we should discuss. 
All right. One of which, one of which I think should be a new regular Medicare um, segment on the show because we're in a house that uh, we've had completely rehabbed, and then we moved all the contents from our 8,000 square foot house in St. Charles, Illinois, into a 2,400 square foot house in Wayne, Illinois. And all we have to keep us company is boxes, boxes, boxes everywhere. So while going through some stuff and trying to reduce the piles of garbage that I've got laying around here, I ran across a significant stash that I hadn't remembered that we had of stories about Medicare Advantage. Most of them. Oh, negative. I love th- I love those stories. Well, you may be aware that I sent you a list of these stories. There, it's a two-page long list of Medicare Advantage articles, and I thought every episode we could have a Medicare minute going into the episode. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, all you have to here's what you have to do. Your responsibility, sir, should you choose to accept it, is to select one of the stories from the the uh, list that I sent you. Okay. Should I do one now? Do one now. And let's just see how quickly I can plow through this. All right. Let me get after that. Hold on. Meanwhile, I'll talk about another activity I'm going to have Randy participate in. I don't know if it'll be this episode or another one, but I ran across a treasure trove of Medicare related games and puzzles. So I think um, Medicare for the lazy man is taking a turn for the fun um, instead of the boring and mundane, I think we're going to be uh, a little more, a little more entertaining, at least going to be me. a little more fun going forward is what I hear. Yeah, I hope and so, but you're supposed to be looking at your list of articles and determining I'm, which one you'd like to have me, I'm uh, look, attack. I'm, I'm looking through my indexing scheme here. Hold on. I will be right with you. Okay. So this this is not the, the, okay, let me, I'm pulling up the wrong one. Let me, list of Medicare related articles. Here we go. Medicare, okay. it, actually, you misread it. It's Medicare Advantage related articles, should be. Yeah. Yes, it is. So here we go. I'm going to, I'm just going to start at the, well, let me just pick a fun one here. Okay. All right. A little known, a uh, number 19. Number 19. Okay. Little a known little downside. Known downside of Medicare Advantage plans. All right. Let me get number 19 out of the pile here and see what we have. These are articles that I've had saved up for podcast recording. And I realize that some of them are getting kind of smelly. They're getting kind of old and musty. And I wanted to use them up before they were completely worthless. And also, I think it's important if we keep our eyes on the prize to help warn listeners to this podcast about the Medicare Advantage danger. And um, one way to do that is to read these articles that I've collected. So let me say that the the one Randy's chosen, a little known downside of Medicare Advantage plans. If you have Medicare Advantage plan and require a brief stay at a nursing home or a rehab facility, you could be in for an unpleasant surprise. And one of Mary's good friends from childhood just went through this thing and I had to save her. I was able to save the woman from the unpleasant surprise that we're going to hear described right here. Um, Let's see, uh, Kaiser Health News reported uh, that uh, they talked to health care providers, nursing home representatives, and others who say that Medicare Advantage plans increasingly are pushing patients to leave such facilities and return home before their medical team says that they're ready. The news is worth careful consideration by seeing yours now that the annual Medicare Advantage open enrollment period has started. Well, this is last fall this uh, article was printed during this period people with medicare advantage can switch to different plans or back to traditional medicare if the practice uncovered by kaiser health news is as widespread as the interviewed experts suggest the impact could be very large of the nearly 65 million people with medicare coverage half are enrolled in medicare advantage plans and uh, rather than traditional medicare And uh, Kaiser Health News notes that both types of Medicare must cover 100 days of skilled nursing home care annually. Hmm, I didn't know it was annual. I thought it was lifetime. Well, you learn something every day on this podcast. However, Medicare Advantage plans have more leeway in deciding when patients must be discharged from such care. 
Sending patients home early has the potential to be lucrative for Medicare Advantage plans. The federal government pays Medicare Advantage plans a monthly amount for each enrollee, regardless of whether that person needs any care or not. This raises the potential uh, incentive for insurers to deny access to services and to payments in an attempt to increase profits, according to an April analysis by the Department of Health and Human Services Inspector General. However, the situation has become more complex when you understand that while Medicare Advantage plans have a financial incentive to discharge patients quickly, nursing homes have an incentive to keep the patients for as long as possible. The length of stay and occupancy are the main predictor of profitability, so they want to keep people as long as possible. As a general rule, people are probably better off at home. However, she adds that the resident ought to have some say about it. Kaiser Health News notes the federal government recently indicated a desire to crack down on the Medicare Advantage practice of sending patients home early. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services put out a call for feedback from the public on various aspects of the Medicare Advantage program. Comments were due by the end of August and will be considered for future rulemaking. So I will tell you right now that Mary's friend was a patient, uh, had some hospitalization and some uh, uh, treatment that, you know, surgical intervention and so forth. And then they sent her to the world's worst Medicare um, or nursing home. Uh, and they said that's all they were going to pay for. She was not allowed the choice, as she would have had had she had regular Medicare coverage. And uh, she was complaining bitterly. And then she had another hospitalization. They did the same thing again. And so she was uh, telling Mary what a horrible nightmare it was dealing with her uh, highly respected company, but Medicare Advantage coverage. So what happened was I discovered a loophole that allowed me to get her into a Medicare supplement plan. When you got a Medicare supplement plan, you're covered by Medicare, original Medicare parts A and B, and the supplement will then pick up the portion of the uh, benefit that is unpaid by actual Medicare. And they don't have the same kind of profit incentive that the Medicare Advantage plans have. So when she needed uh, some kind of uh, institutionalization recently she was happy to be able to select the finest uh, uh nursing home or uh, rehab facility available and she was able to uh, uh, be much more satisfied so that is uh, a word to the wise medicare advantage plans are kicking people out much earlier than they should according to the medicare rules so we've had our medicare minute for today i'm pretty uh, pretty happy about it. how do you think it went randy i think it went very well you know what there was a picture entered my mind when you were telling that story uh-huh. that Medicare Advantage people that are being, you know, railroaded out of rehab facilities. Mm-hmm. Are those the, are those the specialty Medicare Advantage rehab facilities that are actually set up in old Burger Kings with a drive through? I think these might be in the in the abandoned prisons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can I just I just envision people showing up at the drive through with a, you know, like an ambulance or, you know, sure. wherever they showed up and they, they take your ticket and say, well, it's good seeing you, Joe. Keep moving. Right. Right. We'll charge you one day. <laughs> ching, ching, and then uh, they have to <laughs> drive right out. They didn't even get out of the car. They didn't even get out of the that old Cadillac ambulance, you know, with the tailgate that opens up. Oh, yeah. I love those things. Yeah. Well, listen, I had to get to some other Medicare content because we have uh, we're the t- clock is ticking is what I was trying to say. But first, I think we should um, think about the sponsors that are slowly building up our bank account for our Christmas party that we are uh, saving up for. So I'm going to have a moment of silence here. Well, uh, our sponsors are going to be allowed to say almost anything they want to say. All right. I hope that generated some revenue for our Christmas party. I have a few little things to talk about here to finish off this particular episode that we're in. Uh, One of them is an article that says three signs that a Medigap or Medicare supplement policy is right for you. Uh, This is from AMAC, A-M-A-C, the Association of Mature American Citizens. It is the conservative alternative to um, ARP, and uh, it is 
an organization that purports to do the same thing, uh, come together, bring people together, but those of a more right wing or conservative bent and uh, to operate a um, political, some political um, uh, impact on behalf of those people. And they have a, an active Medicare uh, agency. And so I am a member of AMAC, and I have um, had some close ties with that Medicare agency that they operate. And here's a question and answer thing, uh, dear AMAC, I'm going on a uh, I'm going on Medicare next month, and I've decided to go with a Medigap or a Medicare supplement plan. My wife and I are snowbirds, so it's important that I have coverage wherever we go. I do not want to deal with a network. Also, I want to make sure that my insurance pays well in the event that I need serious medical care, and I don't mind paying more for better coverage. Does it sound like I'm getting this right? And that's signed Dave in Lake Placid, New York. Hello, Dave, says the AMAC answer person. From what you have mentioned, it sounds like you're on the right track. Here are three reasons why a Medigap or Medicare supplement plan will be a suitable option for you. Number one, you don't want a network. Medigaps do not have networks of doctors and hospitals. These plans offer nationwide coverage, meaning you can see any provider, doctor or hospital, that accepts original Medicare. Plus, if you were to move, your plan is portable, so you can take it with you to your new area without worrying about changing plans. Number two, you want a plan with more robust coverage. Did you know that Medicare Advantage plans typically have a maximum out-of-pocket amount of $5,000 to $11,000? That is the most that you could spend on a Medicare uh, medical expenses for the year if things go awry. What they're saying there is that you might uh, have to pay as much as somewhere between $5,000 and $11,000 out-of-pocket, depending on your status your in-network or out-of-network status and your co-pays and your deductibles and your co-insurance written into the contract, all that fine print that you find in an insurance policy. Well, that's all handed to you when you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan. And often it's a big surprise. Generally, Medicare Advantage people aren't aware that they're going to have big, big costs if they get sick and need medical treatment. They're going to have to share a lot more of the cost. On the other hand, your out-of-pocket expenses with a Medigap or Medicare supplement policy are much lower. With a Plan G, for example, the most you would pay out-of-pocket on a Medicare-approved service is only $220 or $240 for the entire year. And number three, you don't mind paying a higher premium. For those on fixed income, Medicare Advantage plans might be the only option they can afford. But if you have the means to purchase a Medicare supplement policy, the average Plan G premium is only about $125 a month right now. Keep in mind that premiums vary by location and are subject to increase each year. I hope this helps with your decision. Don't forget to give us a call so we can shop around and make sure you're getting the best Medicare supplement premium. Well, I'll tell you right now, there is a better way to go than Plan G. For most people, it's better. And that is to go with my recommended plan, the high deductible Plan G. If Plan G costs $125, high deductible Plan G is likely to cost less than $50 a month. It'll um, provide excellent, excellent protection, health insurance protection for you, but it will cost much, much less. Now, if you get sick, if you need medical treatment, then it will ask you to share some of the cost, but it's not in the term of a deductible. It's only a percentage, coinsurance of the um, the charges that you get, uh, 20% or less of the medical charges that you have up to a limit in which uh, th then it stops and it pays 100%, just like Plan G. So high deductible Plan G is the plan that I recommend. Now, here is a, uh, a piece of correspondence from a client, Steve from Texas. He's our old buddy who writes periodically and asks questions. And uh, here is his question from September of last year. And I had this in my st stack of uh, things to deal with, and I completely overlooked it. So Steve said, you said that if someone was on a Medicare Advantage plan, that they would have to be enrolled in Part B of Medicare. Is this correct? Does the Medicare Advantage plan pay for the Part B as in Bravo plan for you? I see that some Medicare Advantage plans are free. 
And my answer to Steve was, you are correct. A Medicare Advantage plan uh, enrollee must have Parts A and B and must continue to pay the Part B, as in Bravo, premium in full as long as they have a Medicare Advantage plan. And then I went on to explain some Medicare Advantage plans are free because they charge no premiums, thanks to the largesse of the U.S. Treasury. Due to competition, some plans are also touting the fact that they offer a Part B as in Bravo give back. Basically, they give some cash, maybe as little as $25 a month, to the insured as a partial offset to the Part B as in Bravo premium that they are supposed to pay. And then I said, thanks for the excellent question. Steve is a uh, curious guy, and he has uh, been a source of uh, interesting questions for quite some time. Another uh, question from Steve. I found both of these in my stack, and I did not want to ignore them. This is uh, from late November last fall, almost December, really. And Steve said, hi, I'm looking forward to your sleep apnea guest. My wife thinks I have it, and I probably do. Looking at what they do to diagnose it and treat it makes me wonder. You go to a sleep center where they expect you to sleep connected to a bunch of wires. Now, sure, uh, oh, not sure, he meant to say, not sure how you can sleep normally hooked up like that. Then the treatment is to wear some kind of mask. I'm not sure how well you can sleep in that. You may have noticed that they are advertising a treatment on TV. I looked at this, and it's an implant that delivers a shock to your tongue. It's probably not much, but it sounds terrible. What if your sleeping partner is a bit upset with you and turns up the power to teach you a lesson? I kind of wonder this whole thing is a bunch of BS. If you stop breathing, your body is going to make you breathe unless you have a plastic bag over your head. Interested to see what your guy has to say. And I said to Steve, that's uh, my friend Randy. I will schedule him just as soon as he can postpone his morning nap. And the whole thing is I spent some time with Randy uh, not too long ago. In fact, he and his lovely bride were over here uh, to chit-chat and look at our collection of cardboard boxes recently. And Randy went through a couple of phases. He went through the uh, professional sleep uh, laboratory study of his condition. And then he, uh, they told him, okay, you need to use all this sleep apnea paraphernalia. And so after using it for a time, he got tired of using it. And he said, he thinks it's a bunch of garbage and probably just a money-making adjunct for the doctor. And then he went through another phase where he had given it up and then he felt like, oh boy, you know, I was better off when I used that equipment. So he started using the equipment again. Now he has talked about a, um, an implantable device that takes the place of the equipment. He's not anxious to have surgery, even minor surgery to have a device implanted, but he didn't mention that it shocked his tongue. So he, he touched his shoulder when he was telling me about this thing, and it may be that it's a different device than Steve was describing. But I should get Randy here to do a podcast recording because um, he is he's a funny guy, and he has more opinions and knowledge about this sleep apnea thing after having gone through it, given it up, and then gone back to it again. I'll bet he has some uh, interesting opinions, and uh, Steve is obviously interested in that. So I've got a renew my efforts to get Randy in here to describe sleep apnea treatment for us. So I believe, oh, the one last thing I had for this particular episode, um, I have a um, an announcement from, mm, let's see, this is from Mutual of Omaha, uh, a proud, very large Iowa, not Iowa, uh, Nebraska insurance company. And apparently uh, the uh, Randy Carsons used to have some business relationship with Mutual of Omaha. I think he told me his uh, spousal unit did at one point. And so I stumbled over their Medicare supplement plan and their rates in many cases are pretty attractive. So I wind up selling a bunch of uh, Mutual of Omaha Medicare supplement insurance. And I got an announcement from them. And this is indicative of what I've been telling people. The first thing I have with this two page um uh, item that I wanted to discuss is a chart from a um, an actuarial firm that shows what the history of rate increases has been for Plan G. Now, because of the current political situation, we have entered into a period of 
nasty inflation. And so my chart shows that in 2020, the average rate increases for the various plan Gs were in the neighborhood of 2 to 3%. The following year, 2021, they ranged from a half a percent to 2.5%. And so, you know, on the first of the 2020, they were between two and 3%. In uh, 2021, they had the average uh, rate increases had dropped by a half a point. And the really wonderful year was 2022, when the rate increases of most Medicare supplement plans were in the neighborhood of uh, less than 1% to just over 1%. And all of a sudden, we took a big hike upward in 2023. The rate increases ranged upwards of over 2%, and in 2024, they're estimated to be in the neighborhood of 5%. Somewhere between 4 and 5% is where most of them are going to fall. Some will be higher because of the location and the type of plan. Some will be lower. So these are averages. Now, the announcement for my client from Mutual of Omaha, the client had been with them for whatever period of time the rate increase is, and they announced in you know very uh, somber tones, all right, uh, because this person has a uh, high deductible plan G that I recommend for everybody, their premium is going from the current $53.01 up to a whopping $54.43. So basically, their increase is going to be a dollar forty-two per month for the rest of the year, and that is indicative of one of the major benefits that people can get by buying a high deductible plan G. Very small rate increases, and uh, the uh, much more predictability as to the cost of the insurance. So I believe that is pretty much all I have to say about everything today, Randy. I'm going to go uh, bang my head against the wall until I fall asleep. I've got one thing to add about Mutual of Omaha. Did you, when you were younger, did you ever watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom? Not only did I watch it, I can't tell you how many times I collected Marlon Perkins' aut autograph on things. I swear yeah. to God, he was every place I went, and he was signing stuff like nobody's business. All right, so let me let me just have. I'm going to say a phrase. And I know it's going to sound familiar, but those of you who watched Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, it'll put a smile on your face. And here, this is Marlon Perkins speaking. I'm going to stand here on the dock while Jim wrestles the rabbit alligator. Yeah. <laughs> Jim somehow survived his many years following Marlon <laughs> around. I don't know how, because frankly, I would have killed Marlon and gotten the heck out of there. <laughs> Oh, dear. We used to laugh about that so much. Well, anyway. Well, I think we, that was a Mad Magazine thing, too. Uh, they they yeah. did a whole cartoon about all the things that Marlon made Jim do. Oh, while, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, he was safe and sound. Absolutely true. Well, you know something? Our 75-cent clock just ran out. All righty. But before I sign off and land the plane, there's a few things we always like to do. Grab a pen. You can reach out to Doug at dbj at mlmmailbag.com. He loves to hear from you. He's licensed nationwide to help you with your Medicare supplement planning. Check us out at the website, medicareforthelazyman.com. We would appreciate it in your wanderings through the wilds of the internet. Drop a review on our content. We love it. And it means a lot to us. And ultimately, we're shooting for number one this year again. And last but not least, thank you for joining us. You could have been a number of different places, but you weren't. You were with us, which is exactly where we like to have you, sharing some time with us on Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. And speaking of time, if you weren't tracking us on your watch, you have just spent about 32 and a half minutes with Doug Jones, the anti-insurance insurance guy from Oklahoma originally. No more. He's camped out in the low ground. Uh, what, 742 feet, I think. 732. 732. So it's even lower than I thought uh, in Illinois. So I'm going to turn it back to you, Doug. Well, listen, I just want to say nighty night, Mr. Fisher. I know he listens to these episodes while he's falling asleep. And 
I know that he's a little on the snorry side too, from what his wife says. So I believe that he is probably drifting off to Betty by time or nighty night time as uh, we wrap up this episode. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. We'll be here next time and we'll be looking for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>